Hello, weaving students. Today's lesson is going to focus on four techniques that you are probably going to use a lot in your weaving. The first one I'm going to show you is called Raya, and that's really nice to do near the bottom of your weaving because you can make these long, fringy pieces, and it can give you a lot of texture. You can use it in the middle of a weaving, too. You can see this one has a little stripe of Raya there and some up there. I'm also going to teach you how to make different colors join together. And I'm gonna teach you a technique called slits where there's a little bit of negative space left in between two colors. So let me get my loom and I will show you kids. So first, I want to show you how to make Raya. Raya is also called shag. It's like a shag rug and if you've ever done a Ooh, what's it called? Like a, a, a latch hook rug, I think that's what it's called. It's kind of that same technique. So what I've done ahead of time is I've cut a lot of strands of my yarn. I made mine pretty long. I actually made them just a little bit longer than the width of my loom. And let me show you how this works. I'm making sure you can see. You're going to take your string and kind of hold it in half like that. And it could be a shorter string too. Anything I would say two inches or longer will work with a half inch space in between your weft. And I'm going to start on the end and I'm going to let the loop go over two strings. And then I'm going to bring the end of the string right between the middle of that one. And I'm gonna go under this warp thread and bring that string right between the middle right there. And so you can see, it's essentially just looped around two strings and the bottom comes right through there. And then when you pull it down, it stays because it's resting on all of that regular tabby weaving that's right there at the bottom. So I've done those two. Now I would go and I would do these two. So sometimes I just lift my warp threads up and I bring the strings through. That's probably a mangled mess to see. I'm sorry, kids. So you can see I have that there and I'm making my strings kind of even. So I could do that the whole way across. So I would lift up my next two threads. I would let my loop go over. I'm gonna hold my finger here so you can see better. And I'm bringing that loop right through. And then I'm gonna bring that little string right through. And I've just made a simple loop I'm gonna make sure they're even. And then I'm pulling it right down. Now, once you do a whole line, it's nice to have a row of regular tabby to hold it in between. So we'll pretend I did a whole line and I've got a row of tabby. And you can see how that just tightens it so it can't come undone. Now, I would probably wanna have a lot more shag than that. So for my next row, what I would do, instead of starting on these two again, you could if you wanted to, but you might have some negative space. Instead, I would go on these two. So I would take my next string and I would lift up these two warp threads and then I'm gonna bring my end through on that side and I'm going to bring it through on that side and then pull it down and it rests right there and I've got a lot of color going on. Now sometimes I might wanna do layers, like I might wanna go with some other colors so it has a lot of different colors down there. So let's look at this one again. So you can see how this person, they had a lot of rows of the Raya. And so they've got white, they've got purple, they've got pink. And sometimes what people do is they make to, like to make a bunch and then take scissors and trim it to the size that they might want. So it's nice and fluffy. And I see this one has the slit technique, which I'm going to show you also. It was kind of hiding there. So you can see how this person wove red here but then pink and orange over there, and it leaves a negative space. So you remember that space is one of the elements of art, so you might wanna incorporate that. Next, let me show you how I would weave if I wanted to use several different colors. So you can see I've woven this little square shape of this soft black yarn, and now I have lost my needle, of course. There it is, but I've lost my thread, kids. My goodness, let me get another one. This isn't very long. I've lost my long one. There it is. 
So I'm threading my needle. Should have had that done already, kids. That's why I'm not a professional YouTuber yet. That's why I only have 18 subscribers. <laughs> oh, so sad. Okay, so when you're weaving, you can weave any little shape wherever you want it, and then you can always interweave around it. So I'm gonna show you first how to make slits, a negative space. So if I wanted some black color here, but maybe some of this like variegated yarn over here, what I would do is I would just start weaving. And you can see I'm only going over about five warp threads. So I'm pulling it just like I would start normal and I would tuck my little tail so I don't pull it out. That's what Keenan will do because he won't watch this video. And then we're gonna go back over. And I'm gonna pull it back. So instead of going anywhere near that warp thread right there, I'm just turning around right here. So then I'm gonna go back again. Do, 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 do. Happy weaving days. Kids, maybe weaving will be relaxing for you. Kind of help your stress levels. You never know. Maybe it will cause stress in some of you. Hard to say. Okay. So I'm just continuing weaving back and forth. And so I would go as far as I want that shape to be. Now, right yet, my um, strings aren't really tamped together. But if they were, you could see I could weave a lot further and it would leave an opening right there. So that technique is called the slits, and it's used to make negative space. One time I had a student who made a beautiful tree, and she kind of wove the background around the branches, and so the limbs really stood out very nicely. It was a very nice technique to use. So you could see I would just go back and forth, back and forth, just in that little area. And it's okay that it's not connected because eventually, parts of the weaving will be connected maybe in a different space. Like you wouldn't want to have, I don't know, maybe you would want to have a lot of slits and just connect it a little bit. It's your weaving, my students. So if I were doing that, I might just cut it off and then tuck my little tail so it doesn't stand out too much. And remember, at the end of the weaving, we can take it and like trim it. This one could use some trimming over here. So let's pretend now I want to connect it instead of having it be a separate space. Maybe I want to connect it now because I'm maybe I don't want so much negative space. So what I would do, I'm going to tuck that tail a little bit more. I'm just going to kind of start weaving the same way this was. So I'm going over, under, over, under. And then instead of turning around at this thread, I'm going to open up a little space in between the black. So that's why I didn't tamp it too tight yet. I'm going, to just, I'm going to open that space and I'm going to go under and I'm going to pull my strand right there without pulling it through. And then I'm going to turn around and go backwards, back across my loom. Sometimes I like to do different shapes just because little shapes can kind of build up quick. You get to see some results. So you can see this is called interlocking because the two different colors have locked around that same warp thread. So what I would do now, because I've got that green one, is I would just pull the black one down and make another little space so that when I come over, I can just go right through that space again. And then I can turn around and go back. And so you can see it is interlocking. You can see where it is. And I'm going to just pull it right down. And then I'm going to push that little black string down. So it kind of has a nice little technique. It kind of looks like this when they go together, but it gets tamped down so it doesn't get really bulky. Now it would get bulky if you had like a really thick thread and a really thin thread. So this does work best for threads that are about the same thickness. So I'm just going to finish this thread until it is at the end. So I put that one there, push that one down go back. Oh, my neighbors are yelling. I wonder what's going on. Some good action out there. Okay, kids. And I'm going to go right through that area right there. And actually, my little tail ended, so maybe I would have to start a new one there. So you can see how it's connected. Let me show you another weaving that used this technique very well. 
this student had a really nice kind of geometric design and you can see especially against the yellow and the purple how those strands shared those different warp threads so this student probably wove their triangle shape first and then probably wove in the yellow and the green and it looks really nice on both sides i think that looks really beautiful i think that's a nice job and you can see they have a little negative space right there I'm going to teach you this technique in a few days. It's called the striped tabby and it makes vertical stripes. But I think the interlocking works great. I'm going to show you now a different technique called the dovetail. And it is similar to the interlocking. Let me get a different color thread for this. Oh, thank you for being patient, kids. That's the name of the game this year, isn't it? Okay, so with dovetailing, what we're going to do, instead of turning around on the warp thread, I'm actually going to weave in my, my um, natural color thread is going to kind of go right through the loop of the black thread. So let me show you how that works. So I would be weaving just like normal right over here. And then instead of sharing the warp thread, I'm going to find this little loop and I'm gonna go right through the loop. And then I would turn around. So you can see it because there's such nice contrasting colors. So this works really great if you need your color to be, to make maybe a shape where the two colors end in the middle, like if you're making a rounder shape. And it's a nice technique to use. So now I would then just weave back. I'm just using regular tabby. This would work with any of the other techniques we're using as well. And then I would weave back again. And then I'm gonna find the next little loop. There it is. And I'm just gonna go right through the loop. Now sometimes if it's a really fuzzy texture, sometimes your needle will catch on like the furriness of the thread. So maybe this might be a harder one to use with a really textured thread. So you can see that they are joined. And now I'm gonna go back the way I came. Opposite, of course. So that is called the dovetail. Maybe you've seen furniture that's used a dovetail technique before, like on drawers. Maybe if you've taken um, one of the classes, the technology classes, and that's where the two pieces of wood kind of share an area. So that one is the dovetail. And this, of course, also works well with threads that are about the same thickness. And so eventually, I would tamp everything down and get it close together so I wouldn't even see my warp threads at all. And my weaving would have such a nice, beautiful texture. Let me see if I can find one over here that used that technique. I'm not really sure. It's hard to tell sometimes. I can't really tell. So kiddos, those are the techniques today. We learned the raya or the shag. We learned the slits, kind of leaving a negative space. We learned the interlocking, where the two colors share a warp thread. And then we learned the dovetail, where the two colors join in between the warp threads by kind of joining with each other. So those are three basic techniques, maybe four techniques, that you are going to use a lot in your weaving. And after today, we'll learn some different textured techniques, just like we did with the paper weaving. Maybe we'll do some twill, maybe a little houndstooth kids. 